Hey, everybody. I am back. OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy, for another edition of The Mikey Show. And uh, I am going to follow up with from my last video where I made fun of the $50,000 volume controls. And, uh, you know, it's so funny how I, I guess what I have to realize is I'm, I'm so unique in uh, being one of these people, one of the, the hi-fi people, or should I say, you know, audio guys on YouTube. I'm so different than everybody else that you guys aren't used to hearing the message that I bring. So you create all sorts of stories because it's like you're getting left fielded by this stuff, right? Um, and so you think that like my last video, for instance, you think it means I don't like preamps. Um, you think it means uh, uh, I don't like analog. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous what you come up with. What I've realized is most of y'all don't listen to me, okay? You're not listening for my point at all. You want to be right in typical fashion. And so you start to hear a couple words of my thing. And then in your mind, you're already thinking about what clever response you're going to type into the feedback. Um, and you're not thinking about getting the message that I'm putting across. And I can tell this because of the, the answers or, or the, 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 the feedback that you put in the response column. Uh, they, some of them are so far from what I said that I'm like, dude, you gotta, you know, you know, shut up, you know, be, before you respond, like, like listen to the damn video. So this will help kind of bring things into perspective for you guys. Okay. This is my case for preamps, why you want to preamp, why I agree with preamps. Okay. Because, um, if, if you all have been listening, I know some of you got this, I have said, there's one brand. Okay. One brand, Playback Designs, is the only DAC that I know of that, and, and really the MPD-8, okay? So we'll stick with that because um, that's the one that I keep in my rig. That's the one that I compared to my $26,000 volume control tube uh, preamp that I had, world-class level. Um, so we'll keep it simple. There's one DAC that I know of that beats preamps, okay? All other DACs, pretty much need a preamp. Okay. Uh, and um, so, so let's get that cleared up for you. Um, uh, preamps in, in, in the video that I made previously was about $50,000 plus preamps. You guys are responding in the responses about, Oh, my $7,000 preamp sounds good. And I'm so happy with it. I'm like, duh, it's, it's not 50 grand. My gripe was how ridiculous the prices are for something like a volume control, which is all that a preamp does. And yes, the preamp in a lesser system or in a system that doesn't have good digital will need to juice the sound up, okay? Any way we look at it, a preamp is additive, okay? You hear me talk about, or people talk about, a straight wire with gain. That would be the ideal preamp. It's never like that. What they mean is, uh, just a wire that is able to make things louder uh, without needing a circuit. All, all you have without needing capacitors or resistors or transformers or any of that shit, just a straight wire that had gain on it. Then that would be the perfect line stage because it wouldn't color anything because it's just a straight wire. Okay. That is not reality, right? What we get is a whole freaking box with a ton of circuitry. Personally, I, I, I you know, I tend to like simpler designs um, but some of them very complex, doesn't matter what they are. All of them have resistors, capacitors, transformers, all this other stuff. Many of them have tubes. Many of them have eight tubes, you know, in there. All these things are are, are adding to the signal. They're, 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 they're um, additive. You either add or you take away from a signal, but you affect that signal. The sig Because a preamp, you know, we've got our DAC or our phono pre, okay, depending if we're analog or if we're digital. We have a DAC or a phono pre in front of the line stage. And then on the ass end of the line stage, we've got a power amp, right? So you're putting something in that that normally would be connected by an RCA connector or an XLR connector. We're putting a piece of gear. We're cutting that wire in half. We're putting a piece of gear, putting ends on each one of them. And then we're putting a piece of gear on the line in between, right? So it can only be additive. There's no way that it isn't adding something, okay? Just so happens that preamps add great stuff to a system many times. It's like it sprinkles magic fairy dust onto your audio rig. Uh, you, 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 I Trust me, I had, like I said, I told you, I had the Nat Audio Magneto Stat SE. Go ahead, look it up. 
$26,000 preamp, world-class, many people think among the best ever made, along with CAT, SL, whatever it is now, um, but Convergent Audio Tech, along with, oh, what are the other preamps that really stand out? I can't, I, I can't remember right now which are the, I just think of CAT. There's other ones that are world-class level preamps that, that are, there, there's like five preamps that are ones. Some of the uh, audio research uh, preamps, I think were really audio research was known for the preamps uh, more so than it, the amplifiers. Um, uh, 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 I think, I can't remember if balanced audio, the Rex, if that was considered in there, um, uh, aesthetics, uh, um, the uh, Jupiter or Janus. I can't remember the name. Um, it's it's got a real. It looks like Roman letters on it. And 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 most of these preamps are two box preamps um, that are like the ones that have gone down in history as some of the best preamps ever made. Nat Audio was one of them. I had one of these things. It made every rig I had sound better. This thing was like magic fairy dust. You put this preamp in and it just breathed. It was like it breathed life into the audio system. So I kept it. Even though I'm an all digital rig, I kept that thing. Um, and, uh, and, and I shouldn't say, I say I'm all digital, but I do have master tape. I just don't use tape even though I have a wicked tape set up. Um, so if I want it, it I'm going to, for, for this discussion, we're going to say I'm all digital. Um, at the time when I was using my NAT audio, I wasn't even, still wasn't listening to my tapes, even though I have a Studer that's decked out with flux magnetic heads and I've had the complete power supply gone through. I've got a pimped out Studer A80. I've got a, 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 a basically what was a brand new, um, Otari MX5050 Mark III. Um, so I have killer tape machines. I have tons of tapes that are extremely good uh, mastering, um, but I still don't use them. I was upset because e I was only using it as a volume control. It's $26,000 volume control. And I realized the whole time I'm listening, I'm like, damn it, you know, I'm not taking it out because it makes everything sound better. But I am disgruntled that I have to have a $26,000 volume control because that's all it ever was used for. Turn it up, turn it down, okay? When I got the Playback Designs MPD-8, that's one DAC I know of that was able to knock out this preamp. This preamp is, the, to me, the best preamp I've ever heard. Uh, and, and so at that point is when I started to realize, well, it's possible that you can have a rig without a preamp and actually sound better than with the preamp that I had in at the time, the NAT audio. Let's put it this way. No preamp is missed. This year when I went to Capital Audio Fest, there was no preamp. Was it missed? Did I need it? No, I didn't need it. Um, could it have added some tube, uh, you know, warmth to it or fuzz to it or distortion what it really is that comes from tubes um in, into it yeah i could have had that flavor in there but i didn't want to i didn't want that i wanted the straight wire with gain okay so people that understand me understand where i'm coming from guys that have been doing high-end audio for 30 40 years understand when i say we want to get a line stage out of there if we can because it's additive okay it's a purest thing it's a purism to have a straight wire with gain. Unfortunately, no preamp does that. They all add their flavor, especially ones with vacuum tubes in there. Now, it doesn't mean they're bad. They could add fantastic flavor, okay? Just like the Nat audio that I was telling you about. Fantastic tube flavor. And then you can change your sound. You can roll the tubes and give it more bass and less highs or give it more etched highs and less bass depending on what tubes you put in. You can change it all up by swapping out tubes. That's what makes it fun for some people. I am of the ilk that I don't have all this time to, stand, to spend butting around with my audio system. I don't, I, I, I really want to go there for music only. I don't want to go there for anxiety. Well, wonder what this sounds like. Wonder what that sounds like. Mm, maybe that's not good enough sound. Maybe I should try a little of this. Maybe I should try this tube. Maybe I should buy some more stuff and try this tube. And maybe I should try this. And I don't want to do that, man. I spent many years doing that. I'm over it. Okay. Um, I've graduated from that school. 
I am a graduate now. I don't need to futz around with my audio rig um, I, uh, it, and burn my time. I don't have time for it. I want to go into the rig and listen to music and then leave my rig and do other things. Okay. Said that many times. So preamps in, in now, if we start going to a lesser system, we go to a system that has, you know, a, first of all, if you even have vinyl in your rig, you need a preamp, okay? So that excludes us from the conversation. If you're a vinyl guy listening to this right now, for the purposes of this conversation, you get a hall pass because we know you need a preamp. It's not even a discussion for you because um, we're, we're, we're talking about digital and whether or not you need a preamp. Not analog, you're handcuffed. You need a freaking preamp. You need a phono pre, you need a record cleaner, you need a tone arm, you need a cartridge, you need angle of angle of all this, whatever, okay? You need a lot more than just a freaking line stage, okay? You need a whole apparatus, okay? Um, and, and so you get a hall pass. We get it. You signed up for vinyl. Totally cool. No problems there. But that's not the conversation we're having. I'm having the conversation and, and aiming this at people that only use digital, okay? only use streaming or CD or, or, or whatever. Uh, these are the people that I'm talking about. And in the case of only one DAC, the playback designs, then it's better than any preamp. You're not going to find a preamp that makes it sound better from a straight wire with gain standpoint, okay? You can find a preamp that will color your system more than the playback designs alone. Playback designs alone is going to give you an extremely clean straight wire with gain sonic. OK, so what that means is now you've got to really rely on the rest of your rig because the rest of your rig has to pull off the magic because you're going to expose it with a straight wire with gain otherwise. OK, so many people love the preamp because the preamp can fix anomalies. The preamp can fix sharp DAC. The preamp can fix artifacts in crappy sounding, maybe not enough oomph on the output of the DAC. Many DACs are weak on the output. So a preamp gives enough juice for the amplifier so that it gets punchy all of a sudden. But without that preamp, you wouldn't have the punch. So that none of that stuff is the case with the Playback Designs MPD-8. And I want you to guys to take this into context because this is what I'm talking about. Um, in my previous video, I was making fun of $50,000 plus volume controls, okay? That's what I was doing because, again, because I get these feeds that come uh, 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 absolute sound in my Google feed every single day, and I, 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 I read them. I'm like, what are they pitching today? You know, oh, $50,000 volume controls. Great, you know, let me have at it, you know? So I bring it up for discussion because... Look at the discussion from the last video. These are good discussions to have. And I'm not afraid to say it the way that I say it. And I'm not afraid to open these discussions, which a lot of people are. Um, you know, Mikey's different, okay? Um, so so that is the discussion. Now, getting back to cheaper DACs, okay? You have, uh, you know, people said, they named off some different brands. You know, these are $5,000 DACs and stuff like that. Now, very few. I've, I sell one starting at $2,500. That is totally musical. It's the new on tech. Okay. Again, I seek out DAX that sound musical. I do not like DAX that are forward and harsh sounding. Um, so the new on tech fits perfectly into my je ne sais quoi, into the way I sell, into creating the type of sonic that I like to create for people. I do not like to create analytical hi-fi for you. Um, I think that's no fun. For me, it's no fun. So therefore, I don't sell it. I don't pitch it. Even if you want it, you're going to have to go to somebody else because I'm Mikey that creates musical sounding hi-fi rigs for people, relaxing sounding hi-fi rigs where you go to relax, not where you go to juice up and get banged over the head and like throttled of all your emotions, you know, and, 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 and get absolutely assaulted with the sonic. It's not the style. So if you want that style, people know this. They don't come to me. People come to me for a certain reason. So I'm not going to sell the analytical DAX just because you might be an analytical guy. Um, that to me is a, a salesman thing, right? I'm here because I create audio systems uh, of, of um, it's like a designer, right? Like a clothing designer. Does um, a Versace, I'll take for instance, or Valentino. Does Valentino make things that look like Versace so he can sell it to people that like God? You know, all these chains and weird like uh, graphic prints on the silk shirts. Does Valentino's much more classy. 
does does he make stuff like Versace so he can sell to them? No, he doesn't. He he creates things in a certain realm, and those are the people that come to him. So that's what makes me a little different as a seller. I don't sell you analytical uh, DAX and and preamps to fix them. Uh, uh, I try and come up with other ways to do that. Now, my new OnTech DAC, the DAC that is $2,500, that does require a preamp because it does not have a volume control on it. Therefore, you need to use a preamp. Now, preamps, I sell a preamp, and I'm going to show you guys in a second, that is, oh, I don't know how I'm going to edit this in. I'll do a separate video because, again, I'm using a platform right now where I do this on the fly. There is zero editing in what you're watching right now. It's unscripted. I'm flying from the seat of my pants. Um, so I'm not going to edit in the video that I take. I will make a video of the Nat Audio uh, Symmetric, which is a balanced uh, preamp. Remember how in yesterday's video, we saw that the boulder, the thing that made this boulder, one of the bullet points for it being $142,000 was that the fully balanced design killed all hum and noise, okay? Well, I'm going to show you something that for under $8,000 is a fully balanced design that kills all hum and noise as well. You don't need to spend over 50 grand to kill hum and noise with a balanced design. So I will show you this in a separate video. We will go over that. I'll do deconstruct it, take the top off. You'll see what a $7,000 amp made by a company that has integrity that isn't trying to gouge wealthy people um, and, and, and how they create a preamp, a line stage. So a line stage is, is in, important in systems that need a line stage. Um, and the systems that don't need a line stage are one system only. Those are all digital systems that use a playback designs MPD8 DAC. Okay. So I don't think that could be much more clear. Now, there was one other DAC that I remember in history that, that was sounded phenomenal with its volume control, and that was an Exogal Comet DAC. They're no longer in business, Exogal, and, but that thing was great without a preamp. It did not need a preamp. It did a phenomenal job. And there might be others that I just don't know about, but I haven't come across many DACs where the volume control doesn't somehow leave something to be desired. Most DACs have crappy volume controls. The playback design is something different, okay? So again, take this into context what I'm talking about. The video yesterday, making fun of 50K preamps. I certainly believe in preamps. I just don't think you need to go over 26K. I would say 26K is the top of the line DAC, uh, preamp that I know about, the Nat Audio Magnetostat SE. One is going to a new home uh, in, uh, in Maine. Uh, so Doug, hope you enjoy that. Um, and, uh, uh, uh y you know, so preamps, otherwise they're needed. Okay. You, you want to put a preamp with, you, you, you'll need it. If you got vinyl, you'll want to put it with a DAC that's forward sounding a lot of PCM DACs, a lot of cheaper DACs. They just need a preamp. You need to put a line stage in there to tame it. Even the Rockna which was at the time was one of my favorite DACs. It was too harsh. It did something really interesting and, and pretty with the imaging. I'd never heard anything image like that, but it was too harsh with the volume control that it had on board, too harsh. It did not sound good without a preamp. You had to add a preamp to it and you had to add a tube preamp to it. Then you tamed out that $16,000 DAC by using a $26,000 volume control. Now, with that Rockna and that Nat Audio, we had 26 plus 16, you know, whatever, who can... I'm not a, you know, what is that? 15 and 20, 30, 40, two, you know, grand. Um, I can beat the combo of those two with the 24K MPD-8 by Playback Designs. So that's why I have this uh, fervor for Playback Designs and the MPD-8. It's the only, it's only 24K. I know that's a lot for many people, but look, this is OCD Hi-Fi Guy. Not OCD mid-fi guy or OCD low-fi guy. I'm OCD high-fi guy, okay? Top of the line stuff. So when you're in the market for these 20, you know, high-priced items, to me, there's nothing better than the, the, the MPD-8 DAC for 24K. And I can beat combinations. I've tried it. So that is the whole conversation, okay? So we're bringing it back down to reality. Um... I'm, I was not saying in the last one, one that I don't like preamps. I was not saying I don't like analog. I've got, look at all those tapes, man. Those are 
two inch 24 track session reels the, the actual originals if we go over there look at all those tapes man i am an analog guy i have the best analog that there is master tape it doesn't get any better for analog it it it, 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 it makes vinyl look like child's play okay i don't care if you have a chronos rig it makes it look like child's play um, master tape um but i don't even listen to my tapes dude i've got better than vinyl um on tape and i don't even listen to the tapes because of the mpd8's prowess in the digital arena so if you guys want to have these discussions and you want to argue about digital versus analog which is not at all what this video is about argue mpd8 versus analog don't argue digital versus analog because there's some crap digital out there that sounds horrible and totally analytical and some of it is 50 60 hundred thousand dollar dax that still sound completely analytical and garbage in my opinion uh, it's not garbage okay i shouldn't say that it's super analytical and it's overdone and it's not enjoyable for me because it's distracting about the ear candy i'm distracted by the presentation of the sonics rather than connecting to the music. So that's not why I do hi-fi. I don't do hi-fi to trip out on Sonics. I do hi-fi to connect to the music, okay? So um, anyways, I wanted to take a second to make the second video and tell you about my case for the line stage and where you use it, okay? You use it everywhere except for a system that has a Playback Designs MPD-8 DAC in it. I don't think I could be more clear than that. So. Thanks for joining. See you.